This video is brought to you by Tactile Turn. They make fully machined pins right here in the US out of materials like brass, copper, titanium, steel, and zirconium. Tactile Turn has click pins like the movers and shakers, or bolt action pins like the glider and slider, but they also now have a bolt action knife, or BAK, that's currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. To back the Kickstarter campaign or see more about what Tactile Turn has to offer, hit the links in the description. If you purchase anything, it will help support the show. Whew, lots of planning for this one. This, this is going to be quite the episode. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best damn EDC, and it's time for another EDC Weekly. And if you're new here, I start this show off since it is a community show with all the community announcements. Everything that's going on behind the scenes, winners of the giveaways, videos that I've got going on, coming up, whatever. Tons and tons of stuff is always going on, so I use this moment to update you guys. If you don't want to see this, just skip forward like three or four minutes and it'll be over. We'll start the show. First up, it is a new month, so that means that the March giveaway is now over. I have gone through and randomly selected a winner. I've given each of the featured people from the weekly or Instagram a second entry, and the winner was Elias Simon with this entry right here. Congratulations, Elias. I will be in touch. I also said last week that I was going to give away a Giltek Ruck with the Best Name EDC logo on it. I said choose a number between 5,000 and 6,000, and the random number selected was 5,144, and Eric Bauman actually got that correct. Congrats, Eric. I will reach out to you, and we will get in touch. I'll get this out in the mail to you. I also am giving away a tactile turn slider in titanium from the tactile turn video I did earlier this week. I said choose a number between 2000 and 3000 and I selected a random one. 2912 was the randomly selected number and the winner was Acta Croatica with 2909. That was the closest person to 2912. So congratulations. I will also be in touch and I will get that tactile turn slider in the mail. Keeping the trend going this time around, we're going to give away just a standard key smart. So if you want to know how to win a key smart, just watch the video. I will explain how to enter later in the video somewhere as usual. All right. So it's a new month. It's April. And I said that we're going to mix things up this time. We're going to do a different style of show for the EDC weekly. Basically you send in your pictures and say, Hey, I want to fix this. I want to change this. Can you suggest gear? What can I do differently? Whatever your problem or question or concern or basis for needing critique may be, you send the picture in. I share that picture with the community at large over in Discord, and I ask for advice. I also give my own advice. We try to come up with an answer for you to help guide you to find the gear that you're looking for. I think it's a neat idea. I hope and think this show is going to turn out even better than the normal EDC Weekly, at least in my opinion. I haven't shot it yet, so I don't know, but I think this is going to go really well. I think I like this a little better than the normal show, but this is a trial, so we're going to see how it turns out. And these four submissions are from that, and I also have six honorable mentions to also answer on my own. So not with the community, but on my own. So with that said, let's do the thing. Ugh. Gotta set my timer so I know when 30 minutes is up because my camera will cut off after 30 minutes, or at least it'll stop recording. Here we go. I originally was only gonna do three submissions for this show, but the more I got into it, the more I really actually wanted to help you guys and wanted to answer as many questions as possible. So also in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this format. I'm doing two different styles in one video and I'm doing that so I can kind of test the waters. This is an experiment after all. So the first four are pretty much the same format as the normal EDC weekly. The last six are actually like the old honorable mentions, but I'm taking their concerns and questions and answering them. So if I replace the EDC weekly, I would likely go with the first format. And if I use this as a show, in addition to the EDC weekly, I would go with the second format and I would just rattle off answers to help people complete their EDC, show a picture, say what their concern is or what they're seeking and just go from there. So there are two different formats. I'm putting them side by side in the same show so you guys can say, hey, I like this one better. That's what we'll go with. It, this is all an experiment and I think it's fun. I'm enjoying this a ton. So stop rambling. Let's do this. The first submission this week comes from Jacob Hagen. You can find him over on Instagram at Hagen underscore 5.56 underscore for so 556. Of course, you guys know what that is. But first up, we have a recycled firefighter Truckee small as well as a Sharpie with a fine tip, an Ace Comb and a Leatherman PST. I imagine he carries all of those inside the recycled firefighter. He also has a brushed stainless Zippo, a field notes expedition notebook, a Fisher space pen bullet, Burt's Bees lip balm, and a Streamlight MicroStream USB. Above all of that, we have a recycled firefighter sergeant, as well as a Leatherman style CS. And below that on his keys is a remove before flight tag, as well as a wire key ring. To the far right of the photo, we've got his frozen North cloth handkerchief, as well as his knife of choice, which is the Kaiser SLT. 
And at the bottom of the photo is the Arc Company Rambler. And then finally to the far right is the Casio G-Shock GD-350. So quite a busy carry, a lot of stuff here, but he seems to keep it organized. Jacob says, I really never stick to a theme with my EDC besides having quality items that work. The PST is a great pocket-friendly multi-tool that is an essential part of my EDC since I drive an older Jeep. The Recycled Firefighter Truckee is a great pouch for carrying my Leatherman Comb Lighter and Sharpie in my cargo pocket or my pack. The Arc Company Rambler is a great organizer for my flashlight, lip balm, and pen. I love the channel. It's definitely opened my eyes to so much new and interesting EDC gear. So what he is looking for, Jacob says, I'm looking to add some titanium to my carry that matches with the Kaiser SLT. I want a titanium watch, pry tool, pen, and flashlight. I would really like the items to match the neat blasted finish on the handle. So I shared this over in the Discord in the EDC Photos channel and then the EDC Photos discussion channel I got your answers from the Discord. The Mud Kip King suggests the Grafton pin as a titanium pin alternative. And S13 Danny today says that you should get the Maratek Pico Widgie two inch pry bar. That's about $16 or the Maverick Custom six inch stone wash, which is about $105. And for the flashlight, he suggests a Lumintop IYP365. That's about 50 bucks. And those are the only suggestions I got from the community for this actual carry and this request. I think those are pretty great suggestions. I'm not familiar with the Grafton pin. One thing you should know is if you're looking for titanium, it's gonna be an expensive option. You're gonna to have to pay a little more for everything just because it has that titanium tag that warrants a higher price. That's just how it is. That's the EDC world right now. When it comes to titanium, I'm not super familiar with a ton of titanium watches. I know there are a lot of options out there. One of my favorite watches that I have in my collection is my Pathfinder, my Casio Pathfinder, the PAG240, but it also comes in a titanium version. So if you want something that's more of that G-Shock look or the Pathfinder or Pro Trek look to it, you can get a titanium watch like that. And you look like you have this kind of I don't know, woodsman vibe. So maybe you want something a little more rugged like that. If you do, that's a really neat option from Casio and a Pathfinder, the titanium option I want it. But I also have a titanium watch coming my way. It's the Boulder Supply Company Venture watch. It's a quartz watch, but it's about $150 and it's titanium. And other than it not having a date window, that watch looks like the perfect watch for me. Just looking at the pictures, it looks phenomenal. I'm excited for it to come in. I'm excited to make the video about it, but that watch looks awesome. When it comes to pins, you're looking for that same bead blasted finish. This isn't actually stone wash. This is actually a bead blasted finish because it's matte. A stone wash finish is a little more shiny and just marred up. It just looks really like, like the Kaiser Sheepdog, the blade on the Kaiser Sheepdog, the original is a stone wash finish, but the, this what you have here is actually a bead blasted finish. They're very different. Bead blasting actually puts tiny, tiny, tiny little divots in the finish, and that's what gives it that matte look. When it comes to bead blasted titanium pins, the only ones I know of off the top of my head are the Big Idea Design pins. So the Pocket Pro EDC, the TI Click EDC, things like that, the TI Arto, those from Big Idea Designs. I love the TI Click and the Pocket Pro. Those are my favorite pins. But I did some research and tried to find a couple of other titanium pins for you. And the ones that came up were the Vaultkin Impel and the Pico Pin Titanium. So if you look those up, I'll link them down below. But the Vaultkin Impel and the Pico Pin Titanium, those two are the only others that I really found with that same sort of bead blasted finish. So the flashlight, again, it's kind of tough when you're looking for that same finish. The Olight S1R Baton 2 in titanium, the winter edition, if you can still find it, it's out of stock most places, but you might be able to find one used. That's a perfect finish. The Mech Army, so the Mech Army X3S that I had in my keychain flashlight video, the X1S is actually a bead blasted titanium. Then you also have the Claris Mi1C that is a another small flashlight about the size of an S1R Baton, but it has that bead blasted finish. So that's what my suggestions are for you. Hope that helps and uh, thanks for submitting. You don't have a second entry into the April giveaway. The next submission comes from Josh. He goes by Josh Adam. I know that's not his real name, but I don't think he wants his full name posted here. You can also find him over on Instagram at EDCWYO. That is short for Wyoming, EDCWYOMING. I actually shared this picture over on Instagram earlier in the week. But first up in the middle of the photo, his knife of choice is the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. He also has a Kershaw Launch 4. To the left of the photo is his flashlight of choice. That's the Rovion Aurora A3. And above that is his wallet, which is the Travex Contour. He also carries a Gerber Shard, which is wrapped in paracord for a little bit of extra grip. And he also has the Wazoo Survival Gear Bushcraft Necklace. His watch of choice in the top right of the photo is the G-Shock 5610. And then finally, not pictured, is his Apple iPhone 7 
plus. And Josh says, almost everything in my carry is damn near perfect for my use. The wallet is fantastic. The Benchmade was a steal at only $8 in a flea market. Wow. That's crazy. The watch is my favorite G-Shock since I don't have to mess with it and it's an 80s throwback design. The Rovion is filling the need for a flashlight, but a full-size flashlight is needed for my very rural bike ride to and from work after dark to spot the various critters that sometimes make their way down the mountain. And Josh's request is, I'm always on the lookout for my Goldilocks full-size flashlight. I recently picked up the Olay S2 Arbiton 2 since it checks several boxes. I love the size of it, but I wish it had a crenulated bezel and it was a tail click similar to the M1X Striker, but the size of the S2R Baton. And uh, that's a tough one, man. I didn't get any feedback from the people over in Discord. One person over on Instagram actually suggested the M1T Raider, but that doesn't really suit your needs because it doesn't technically have a crenulated bezel like it does. They say it has a crenulated bezel, but it's not a strike bezel. And I think that's what you're looking for, that strike bezel. I could be wrong. If you want just the, the ridged bezel just for the looks of it, then maybe an M2R Warrior or an M2T. Those two kind of fit the bill, but they're not, not exactly what you're looking for. They are tail switch and they do technically have a crenulated bezel, but it's not that strike bezel. And I think that's what you're looking for, like on the M1X. Olight also has this one, which is the Warrior X. This is the recent one. This is a, a strike bezel. It's crenulated, it's a strike bezel, but this is much bigger than the S2R Baton 2. So it's it's really kind of tough to know what to suggest, um, but I'm not super, super familiar with Nightcore, but they do sell an aftermarket crenulated bezel or strike bezel for their flashlights. So if you find the correct Nightcore flashlight, which those that this bezel fits are about the size of the S2R Baton 2, if you buy that bezel aftermarket with one of those flashlights, then I think you have about what you're looking for. That's about the best I can come up with. If you guys know of any other flashlight that fits the bill, it's about the size of the S2 Arbiton 2, but has a crenulated bezel or a strike bezel, let me know in the comments down below or let Josh know in the comments down below. But thank you again, Josh, for submitting. Thank you for sending me your Travex Element wallet. I'm excited to start carrying that. I'm actually not carrying it right now, but thank you for letting me try. I've been wanting to try an, an, a Travex Element for a very long time. Thanks for sending it. Thanks for submitting. You now have a second entry into the April giveaway. The next submission comes from someone who is no stranger to the EDC Weekly and being featured or an honorable mention or shared over on Instagram. This one comes from Timothy Brown. You can find him over on Instagram at peregrine underscore command. He's known for carrying a lot and he's actually asking for advice on slimming down his carry. First up, we have the Care CM9 9 millimeter handgun. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Inside that, he has federal 150 grain micro HST rounds and he carries that in an Uncle Mike's size four holster. His knife of choice to the top left of the photo is the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and beneath that in the middle of the photo is his Leatherman rebar and the Zebra F-701 pin. In the far bottom right of the photo is the Streamlight Silas Pro, which is his flashlight of choice, as well as the Zippo Street Chrome. He also wears a Casio MDV-106A, or the Duro. In the bottom left of the photo is his wallet, the Travelambo Carbon Fiber Wallet. Beside that is the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, his phone of choice in the Urban Armor Gear Monarch case. He also has a white stone dome screen protector and a D-brand dragon skin on that. All right, and I've said it in the past, Timothy gets the award for the most descriptive submissions. He's actually reeled it in a little bit, but uh, here we go. He says, I'm a truck driver and now part-time search and rescue with the local fire department. My work will have me more involved in construction sites and operating heavy equipment, so the multi-tool is about to get a ton of use. My flashlight is indispensable around the equipment or as a means to get to my heavy duty gear. I use the knife constantly for dealing with all sorts of heavy packaging and cutting tires or other tough rubber free from equipment. The phone serves for general navigation and taking photos of shipments that come in and sharing detailed reports with the boss. Pin is sort of a given scene as I sign and accept shipment manifest or mark off order info. My watch has been pretty consistent and just enjoying my now five-year-old Duro that has definitely seen better days. Simple, easy to read, reliable, tough as nails, and cool factor. It has its own unique flair without being a complete Rolex ripoff. The lighter has been more of a fidget toy than actually being used for fire. The tiny firearm is strictly for legal self-defense and stays relatively unobtrusive as I'm moving around a lot. I do have to deal with dark alleyways and the such alone, so the combined with my light, it's a peace of mind when I'm on my own in the backcountry or alone at job sites. He says, I've carried a ton at times while that's good and fun i'm being realistic and looking at ways to either minimize or in some way condense what i have while maintaining most of the functions the lighter and dedicated blade could possibly go but that would also mean dealing with something like a leatherman wave which is pretty significant brick of steel thoughts and input from any and all are definitely appreciated so i shared this over in the discord cody not the bad cody that i ban every day the other cody the the helpful cody 
said replace Leatherman with the Pioneer X. That's not a bad choice. Really great advice. The Dobbs Hopper says, I would say not the SAK because you lose the pliers. I would say something like the Leatherman Skeletool, smaller than the Wave, most of the same components, plus can function as a dedicated blade. That's not entirely true. The Skeletool only has like three or four tools. You're losing the can opener, um, the tiny screwdriver, you're losing a saw, you're losing just you're losing several tools, a file. Um, but if you're not using all of those tools, then it doesn't matter. And I highly recommend the Skeletal tool. I think it's a great tool, very minimal, very light, and still a great way to carry full size or close to full size pliers. The Dob Supper also goes on to say, also carry a pocket organizer like the Yellow Birch to condense non-essential items into a pouch that you can toss in a bag on your desk at work, by the door at home, in your car, so you aren't carrying it all day but can grab it and go if needed. I agree, something like a pocket organizer could help a lot. It condenses that and you don't always have to keep it in your pocket. You can, you know, sit it down and when you need it, you grab the whole thing and go. So keep it in your truck. Since you are a truck driver, keep that in your truck or keep it nearby in a backpack or something and you won't have to carry all of this on you. I highly recommend getting rid of the Zippo. I keep my Zippo in my Maxpedition case, the little front mesh pouch. I keep my Zippo in there because I don't need it all the time and it is kind of just a fidget toy for me as well. The other thing is keep your dedicated blade because you probably use that more than the pliers and the multi-tool and throw your multi-tool in an organizer of some sort inside a Maxpedition pouch or yellow birch or whatever. The other option is to get a belt loop organizer like from Tell of Knives and put your multi-tool in that. So the thing about minimalism and carrying less is it's not always practical for everybody. It's a great idea. It's a very sexy idea of carrying less and having better tools for the job and not filling your pockets. Like that's just something that I think it's a, I think the word is romantic. Like it's something that we all love and want to do, but it's not practical for everybody. So if it's not practical for you to carry less than this, then you're diminishing the whole point of your everyday carry. Everyday carry is having the stuff that you need to get by through your day. And your day is different from my day. I sit behind a computer most days, so I don't even use most of the stuff I carry because I'm sitting behind a computer all day. But when I leave the house, I carry the things that I feel like I'll need. And some things I don't feel like I need. I just carry them because I want to. That's also part of everyday carry. But if you've condensed it down to what works for you, the bare minimum, then that's fine. But you could also work on ways to get this stuff out of your pockets so it's not weighing you down. Because when something's on your belt, like I said, when I did the Tell of Knives video, it's not as noticeable. It's just there, but not really in the way. This is what works for you. I wouldn't say change it. I would say find a better way to carry it. Thanks for submitting again, Timothy, and you now have a second entry into the April giveaway. All right, the fourth and final submission that I've chosen for this episode is from Josh Cole. You can find him over on Instagram at Joshua underscore Snowden. And first up, we have another Spyderco Paramilitary 2. This one has actually been customized with my Carter scales and some brass inserts. I think the lanyard loop, I don't know. He said brass. I don't see where it is. Maybe it's a backspacer. I'm not sure. But he also has the extra card holder beneath that, as well as AirPods for his earbuds and a key smart to keep his keys organized and the key smart key clip. I don't remember the name. I always forget the nano clip. That's the name of it. He also has the tactile turn glider in brass and beneath that is his Apple iPhone 7, which he carries in an Apple leather case. And then finally in the bottom left of the photo is his flashlight, the mass drop blue flashlight. Josh says, I definitely love the wallet and would suggest it to anyone. The PM2 isn't my only knife, but it's special to me because it's something I bought and put together with various aftermarket parts to commemorate my time in the Marines. AirPods are a must for listening to podcasts and music throughout the day. The keys are set up so that the skinny part is clipped to the pocket and the bulky car key and fob sit at the bottom of the pocket. I didn't love the weight of the brass pin, but it is beautiful. I didn't like the size of the mass drop light. His request says, I do feel like my EDC is close, but I can't quite pick out the right items in two categories. I have since sold the pin because it was too long and too heavy. I need a new pin, obviously something a bit shorter and lighter, although I do like a bit of heft. I have since sold the flashlight. I need a new flashlight. I'd actually prefer something longer, but still only AAA sized. Over in the Discord, APG36820 said, for the flashlight, I would say a pin style flashlight like the Prion P2 or the Streamlight Stylus Pro on the budget end would still fit the bill. I myself have been looking for a smaller pin and have been looking at the Mini MIG in an assortment of materials. It's a bolt action pin, roughly 3.5 inches in length. Weight would depend on the material of your choice. Hoker said the Streamlight MicroStream USB in Coyote would look nice and fit the bill. And several other people also recommended the Streamlight MicroStream and the Streamlight Stylus Pro. I totally agree with those recommendations. And the only thing that I would also suggest on top of that is the Phoenix LD05. You can find that over in the Phoenix video I did. It is a longer flashlight. It's a pin light, but it's still AAA powered. It has two AAAs inside it. And it's got your standard functions as well as a UV light, which 
may not be useful to anybody, but there you go. Those are the flashlight options. Really, those are the only two that I know of, and there are tons of pin lights, but I would definitely, definitely consider the Streamlight Silas Pro in the USB version. For the pin, the Mini MIG, I checked that out. Definitely looks cool. It's like a cheaper Fellholter tiny bolt, so you won't pay that premium, but you still get a very similar form factor as the tiny bolt. And there's also the tactile turn slider. So you had the glider, but you could get the slider. So that's just the shorter version of the glider and you could get it in another version, so not brass. If you want that brass, you're gonna have to deal with the weight. Brass or copper are gonna be heavier than aluminum and stainless steel and titanium. So if you're okay with titanium, again, I highly recommend the Big Idea Design pins. And a lot of people are gonna call me a shill because they've sponsored the episodes for a long, long time. But the truth is, I've tried a lot of pins and I keep going back to the TI Pocket Pro and the TI Click EDC. They're fantastic. And you can kind of choose the size based on what insert you put in it. So that's what's neat is you can choose. If you think the uh, TI Pocket Pro is too short, put a bigger insert in it. Ta-da, fixed, it's longer. It's it's really neat. I think it's clever. There are tons and tons and tons of pin options out there. I'm not an expert in. So if you know of a better pin for him that's brass, shorter than the tactile turn glider and not super heavy, you know where to put the answer. But yeah, I hope that helps. Thank you for submitting and you now have a second entry into the April giveaway. All right, it's time to tell you how to win a Keysmart. If you wanna win this, let me know what you think this series should be called in the comments down below. My current choice is complete your EDC or complete my EDC. I don't know. The original choice was fix my EDC. Some people said that sounds, has a little bit of a negative connotation to it. I don't necessarily think so because you're coming to me in the community to help fix your EDC, to complete it, to finish it. So somebody also suggested complete my EDC. I like that, but maybe we can do better. And uh, I'm gonna ask for your help if you wanna win this Keysmart. Comment down below. Tell me what you think the name of the show should be. All right, so this first honorable mention comes from George G and he says, I could use a nice flashlight, preferably to fit inside the orbit key a lot better than using the built-in one on my phone in order to conserve battery. There are just a couple of options that I know of. So if you're open to switching out your orbit key for a key smart, you could go with the KeySmart Pro, which has a flashlight built into it. It's not the best flashlight in the world, but the KeySmart Pro does have a battery inside for the tile, but also you can use that for the flashlight. Second option is probably KeyBar. You just rolled out a flashlight for the KeyBar. It's the KeyBar flashlight insert. It's about 20, 30 bucks, I don't remember, but it does fit it's flat, very thin. I think it's a button battery that powers it and it fits inside the Orbit Key, KeyBar, KeySmart, whatever fits inside that, very slim, very light. Obviously it's not gonna be as bright as something like the Rovivon or an Olight, but it will do. The next honorable mention comes from Dillinger Travis and he says, my wallet, not pictured, is too bulky. I'd love to change to a budget-friendly brown leather minimalist wallet. Originally I said the Cave Leather Company Anderson wallet would be great. I totally missed the budget part of this, but there is the Stock and Barrel number 52, not exactly budget-friendly, and the Das Ophen & Mare leather gun deck. Top cider. Those are some of my favorite choices as far as the minimalist leather wallets go, but none of them are super budget friendly. Um, kind of tough when it comes to leather wallets because they're usually handmade and those usually cost a little bit more. So if you're looking in like the 40 to $50 range, most of these will be okay. They'll fit that budget. If you're looking for cheaper, I'm not entirely sure if you're looking for leather. I mean, the Distill Union Wally and the Wally Micro are both leather wallets, I believe if they're not synthetic leather. I think they're actual leather and they're a little bit cheaper. So maybe that, maybe, hope that helps. If anybody in the comments has a better option, let us know. Next up we have David Spadazzi. I think that's how it's pronounced. I actually thought I misspelled this the first time and I thought I put an E on the David, but it's, it's David. He is from Italy. He said, I need to find some EDC organizer to fit this stuff in my pocket. I'm also looking to the Leatherman style PS without the blade to carry a little multi-tool and replace my pen with a Boker 50 cal kid pin in brass. KID. Hold on, I brought some stuff. So organizers, Art Company has sent me a ton. He's got a bunch of budget friendly organizers to hold a bunch of different stuff. You've got pin loops, you've got single organizers like slips. You have two pocket organizers. Here's just a single slip, that's a two pocket. This is another style two pocket. This is a pin, pin loop and a single pocket. And this is a much larger double pocket and a leather slip with a pin loop. So Art Company has a ton of budget-friendly options over on Etsy. This is the cave leather. And he also has this one. Um, but what I was getting to is this. You probably don't want to give up your Travex wallet, but this is my current wallet. This is the Boulder wallet from, from Cave Leather Co. So it's got a slot for cards on the back. You open it up, it's got slots for cards in the inside, but it also has two pockets on the outside. I have the spry bar, which is not out yet. I have my 
Chris Reeves, small Sabenza, and I have the TI Pocket Pro EDC all in my wallet. This is the most compact thing I think I've ever carried as far as like organizers and wallet in one. This is neat, I love this. But I think if you're happy with the Trayvax wallet, I'd say consider one of these from ARC Company. Moving on, hope that helps. Next up we have Brad Michaud. He said, maybe seeking a new micro slim wallet. This is probably one of my favorite micro wallets. I actually carry this in the back of the Yellow Birch Outfitters Pocket Organizer Pocket Pro. I carry this in the zip pouch to hold my cards because it's so slim. It's also Cordura and leather and it's great. This is also from, from ARC Company, but you also have the Trayvax Summit wallet. I like this wallet. It's very, very slim, very minimal. The Lever Gear Tool Card Pro, I actually really like that as a wallet as well. And the Cave Leather Company Anderson wallet, another great, really slim, really minimalist wallet. So those are some really great options for you. Next up we have Thomas Healy. Thomas Healy says, the Kaiser was my first proper knife that I bought, but it would not fit the black and brown theme I have accidentally acquired. Is there an alternative to fit the theme or should I just look to customize? I think if you're trying to customize this knife, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. This knife isn't easily customized because not a, not a ton of people are making things for this specific knife. If you wanna customize a knife, you probably need to pick the knife around the customizations you wanna make, not pick a knife and then try to customize it. You're not gonna have a ton of options if you do it that way. If you're happy with this, I say don't try to theme your EDC if you're happy with this knife. But if you're looking to maybe upgrade your knife or change your knife or swap it out, the Benchmade North Fork, it's a wooden handled knife, so is the Mini Crooked River and the Grizzly Creek. All three of those are wooden handled knives that would fit this. But then there's also the Ontario Rat or the Spyderco Tenacious. Tenacious is a big step down, but the Ontario Rat and D2 would be cheaper, but not a massive, massive step down. You can get that coated blade, black coated blade with a brown handle, but there's also the Boker Plus Urban Trapper, which is another wooden handled knife. Um, but again, I'm gonna reiterate, if you're happy with what you got, don't change it just to, to theme your EDC. If you're really hellbent on theming, then it's probably a better option to upgrade to one of these that we've talked about or just search until you find a brown knife that fits the bill. The last honorable mention comes from Dan McDuff. He says, a secondary knife that won't make me cringe every time its blade touches something. So he said that he this is like the first nicer knife that he purchased. This is the North Fork, I believe, looks like. And he said that, he said it just hurts when he has to cut something with this knife. And I say, don't get a secondary knife, use this knife. So you saved up, got the knife that you really wanted, but the thing is you paid extra for this knife because it is meant to be used. It is tougher than your standard knife. It's a better steel. I believe this is S30V. That is a fantastic everyday carry steel. It is gonna hold an edge. It's gonna be pretty easy to put another edge back on and you are gonna be able to use and sharpen that thing for a long time, years and years, more so than if you had just an 8CR13 MOV steel. This knife is meant to be used and abused and it's okay. It's okay. You don't want to have to spend another $150 in the next two years, three years, but this knife will outlast that. You won't have to buy another knife for a long time. Just enjoy it. Use the knife, put it to its intended purpose. There you go. I do not recommend doing anything at all. If you're happy with the rest of the stuff, use the knife. Don't get a secondary. And just because I want to be thorough, if you want a cheaper knife and you want to just preserve this one, again, Ontario Rat 2 or Rat 1 and D2, phenomenal budget blade that you can just beat the hell out of and it's still gonna be fine. So you can do that with this one. This, fine, this knife is fine, but if you'd wanna preserve this one, Ontario Rat or the Steelwell Cut Jack, there are tons and tons of knives out there that can take a beating. There you go, do with that as you will. That is gonna do it for this episode, the very first episode of Complete My EDC. If you liked this, hit that thumbs up button down below. And I would really like to know how you liked this because if you like this more than the EDC Weekly, it could take its place. I don't know, I wanna mix things up, change things. I don't wanna do the same thing all the time. And this, this felt fun. This was a lot of fun to do and set up. It was a lot more work than the normal EDC Weekly, but it was a lot more fun too. So, so if you think this should replace the standard show or be an additional show, just let me know in the comments down below. Also subscribe so you see more videos like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I do upload new videos. And if you wanna support what I'm doing here, all of the links in the description, everything you saw in this video has been linked down below. It's an affiliate link. If you click through and purchase anything, I get it a little bit of a kickback and it helps keep the lights on, make the show possible. And if you wanna help even further, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bestdamnedc. Be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at bestdamnedc. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at caspertech. And until next time, carry on. Okay, that's it.
That's all there is for the uh, fix your EDC, complete my EDC, whatever I'm going to call it. We'll come up with a name later. See ya.